Welcome to this special Eid episode of Sports Extra. I'm your host Ali Gohar. Eid Mubarak everybody. It's that time of year where we get to spend time with our family. Uh, we also get to eat delicious food and we also get a few days off work. So it's something we always uh, look forward to. So uh, today to celebrate Eid, I've got uh, three guests here today who, who are going to talk about uh, the work that they do and uh, how they usually like to celebrate Eid. I've been joined by Miss uh, Nena Ali. Nena, Eid Mubarak. Eid Mubarak. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum as -salam. Uh, Nena, you are the chairman of the Pakistan Disabled Sports Association. Yes. And I also have Saima Batool here with me. Saima, Eid Mubarak. Eid Mubarak. Saima is a badminton player and also a lawyer uh, by profession. It's great to have you on the show. Thank you and Eid Mubarak to Eid you. Mubarak. And to everyone who's... Uh, their audience to my dear audience as and well. And we also have uh, Sayed Mohammed Awais who's played a little bit of professional uh, cricket uh, and now he's a cricket analyst. Awais, great to have you on. Thank you so much, Ali. Eid Mubarak to you and to the viewers. Eid Mubarak. Uh, Naina, before we start talking about your work, uh, how growing up, how did you usually celebrate Eid? Uh, being a lady, definitely uh, always go to kitchen, shopping, traditional dresses, and uh, especially guests. Uh, usually, I think women are busy in gas stand kitchens. Right. <laughs> All right. Uh, Saima, you uh, lived, uh, you spent a lot of time uh, in the UK. Tell us how you spent Eid there. Well, there was, um, it was never Eid, you know, because... Um, you were in Newcastle, right? Yeah, I was in Newcastle, yeah. It's, it's entirely different because we people used to call each other Kikal Eid Hakini, we make sure, because here's a community who used to, you know, send you warm messages and you guys, because community is such and the society is such, you wait and you really uh, celebrate, but there it's, it's different. It is not as bright, as happy I eat as you spent here. Aves, growing up, uh, what did you usually do? I get the feeling you played a lot of cricket with your cousins and, uh, you know, whoever was around. It is, I mean, especially when we used to be on board for the cricket tours, I mean, definitely missed home, especially because, see, I mean, being, uh, because I was born in UAE, back in UAE, definitely used to miss my uh, hometown, that's Pakistan, because, like, it's totally different on, because you mostly uh, spend either over there with sleeping, I mean, because you don't have much to do in, uh, in uh, outside the countries. Over here, at least you have some gauged in some activities, different activities. I'm sure in the UAE you can celebrate Eid. No, we can, we can. We, we definitely do on, but I mean, because uh, especially my Eid used to be on the tools, I mean, because I used to be somewhere, I mean, playing for, uh, for the UAE team. Right, absolutely. Uh, you, you talked a lot about cooking, and, and uh, are you a good cook? Yeah, I love to cooking because being a lady, it's it's my speciality, it's my art. So I love cooking. Right. So I might get the feeling you're not much I, of a cook. Yes, because yeah, you know yeah. I was afraid you're going to throw this question. Yeah, to I have me. a feeling. Yeah. <laughs> And, uh, so how did you manage in Newcastle then? Uh, well, uh, that's a, as I said, it's a different society. You have to cook and boil yourself. But I would still like to talk about Pakistan, what I do here, because here, yes, I, I, I don't really cook, but um, I make sure that I have to be in my village. I make sure that Where's I your have village? to, that's Chak Abdul Khalik Saina, very close to JLM. Right. I make sure that I have to go to graveyards. I make sure that I have to meet my relatives. I make sure it's a little different. This is what I learned and trained by my uh, mother, that you have to be in your village if you are in Pakistan. Absolutely. Well, I, I get the feeling the man next to you, Avas, is completely useless in the kitchen. He <laughs> expects food to be prepared for him. Definitely. I mean, I'm useless in the kitchen because I've got my wife. She prepares the food for me and my mom. All is safe. And the thing is, <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> Because I mean, they, 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 they have the job because ladies have to do the job. Get in the kitchen, give it a try. I've done, no, once, I mean, I've done once and there was a big bang once I remember. So I mean, it's not a good uh, option for me to be in the kitchen. Yeah, remind me, don't ever invite me for dinner then, especially <laughs> if you're okay. Okay, uh, Nena, tell us a little bit of, uh, about uh, the work you do, the Pakistan Disabled Sports uh, Association. What's it all about? Because it's a need of disabled persons. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's like a platform. It's like a, uh, a thing that we need. Uh, disabled persons uh, in our society, uh, they like useless. No, I believe it. It's a very, very smart person in the world. Right. So, so, so we need it a platform, and it's it's like a work for a team. I'm the member of disabled society. Uh, I'm not a chairman. Chairman is our. 
people. Chairman is our uh, player. Absolutely. Mm. Uh, Saima, now you've uh, played a lot of badminton mm. and uh, I've heard that you're very, very good at it. So what drew you towards that path? Well, I think that was a characteristic uh, and feature of as a normal person. And um, I carry that. It's not it's nothing special, I guess. It's a human has to be in sports for health and for other reasons as well. Well, what, what make me to get into the badminton is it's uh, happening in this country because um, I was actually a player of basketball. And um, when I saw this that not ba basketball team here in this country and I cannot play, so one of my friends introduced me to badminton, Rawalpindi, and I stopped playing that as, as just like an ordinary person. But as I, I was a sports lady, I was a sports person. You were so, very sporty growing up. Yes, certainly I yeah. am. Uh, because my grandfather and my father and everyone was like into sports, not professionally, but yes, as, as a feature of their personality. And then I started, and the people there was really happy about me, and he said, I can play, I can do this. I, so I've been appreciated well, so I started playing. Right, absolutely. Wes, uh, you spent some time uh, playing uh, professional cricket. Uh, when did you realize that this is something that you could do? I, mean, I, I used to play on streets, and my mom, she used to always call me like, come on, uh, why do you play on streets? I mean, you just don't give time to home. And uh, once I remember, she just took me to the stadium because I was interested more in football. And suddenly, I mean, she just told me that why don't, I mean, he just roams around in the street. It's better if he just goes for a professional cricket, joins some cricket academy. So, I mean, at least he could give two to three hours over there and rest in the home. And uh, when I played over there, uh, I played under 17 cricket. And that's where I realized that I could have gone more forward on than played for under 19 UAE, then UAA and then UAE. And the main, I remember the match, which was the most uh, one which could have, uh, I, the place what I got for the UAE team was that playing against England Lions uh, back in Sharjah Stadium where I took five wickets. Right, absolutely. That must have been a big moment it for It was a big moment for me because, I mean, what a fast ball especially likes is that, okay, fine. Uh, I was born in UAE, but as a national, I'm a Pakistani. And Ali, it's a dream for a fast bowler when you're just bowling and when you're at the mark and thousands of people screaming your name. I mean, that's something uh, everyone expects on. Are you still fast? Uh, no more. <laughs> no more. No, I've been out of practice. No. Huh? I have been out of uh, three years practice because I work for an NGO and I've got a lot of busy life now. Yeah, I'm going to talk about. Uh, I'm going to talk about the work that you do at Muslim Hands. But first, uh, Nena, tell us about some of uh, uh, the events you've organized in the past for your athletes. Uh, not athletes. Uh, in last year, can uh, badminton? Uh, sorry, disabled badminton championship in first time in Pakistan. And uh, in 2014, we can arrange a match Pakistan and Indian disabled teams. And in future, we can play, uh, we can plan for Afghanistan, uh, Russia, and Australian teams. We can try to uh, come over Pakistan and we can play and we can uh, fix the match. Absolutely. Uh, Saima, tell us a little bit about uh, the tournaments you've play, uh, played in in Pakistan. Well, not much really because I was not welcome due to some reasons. Right, okay. <laughs> but I had an honor to stand as a um, South Games manager of the ladies badminton team and I've been honored as a uh, badminton confederation, federation and association as an officer. I've been working as a vice president and I've been a uh, trainer as well. And I'm the um, so far I'm an only uh, Pakistani who had uh, uh, made a first lady badminton club and uh, out of that club I, I, there were about 11 young girls who were training them and two of them are still playing at, in the flag of Pakistan, the in, national players. Tell us a little bit more about your club. Why did you decide to set it up? Would because you because um, only back of my mind was as I, I fall and I wanted to play basketball and I haven't had that opportunity here. I thought there was many girls here, many young ladies here who wanted to play, but the, but the society is such, they, they don't be considered as an equal gender here. I'm sorry, but uh, then I start, I, I should be giving something as I, as I, uh, I'm a very proud Pakistani, so I have to do something for my own nation, for my young girls. I start that and I was welcome from here and uh, I started and then I, that, that it keep on, you know, I, I um, there was coaches, there was doctors, there was athletes to come, and it's about it was entire a sports university sort of you know thing here. Uh, Avers, uh, 
you work for an NGO as well, Muslim Hands, and I'm sure uh, all of you uh, working at Muslim, Muslim Hands would be very busy around this time or, uh, organizing lots, lots of things. Tell us about it that. It is, Amin, because right now we have got the Qurbani project, I mean, it's all over the world because Muslim Hands is situated in more than 70 countries. And uh, in Pakistan, we are working in more than 60 districts of Pakistan with permanent projects. Uh, Muslim and special project is about the orphans, I mean, because we work on mostly of the orphans. I mean, we have got around about 25,000 orphans in the world who are, free, who are studying as free of education uh, sponsored by Muslim hands. And in Pakistan, it's more than 5,000. And I work for the orphan sponsorship department. Our key project is the Wazirabad complex where uh, from Pakistan, like 60 districts of Pakistan, where we have permanent projects, where we have orphanages, where, pe uh, where students especially, they have got free education, free food, free uniform and all that. When they get good grades, I mean, the, uh, the children especially, who, uh, who are capable of, uh, uh, like who just get 90, 80 percent marks, we send them to Wazirabad complex where they're trained, where they're groomed up. And many of our children, alhamdulillah, they are doctors now. And in being a doctor, or they have got a good job, I mean, around, the, around Pakistan, around the world too. Absolutely, no. That that's absolutely uh, is, I mean, that's absolutely wonderful. Because, I mean, it the, goes without saying. Really. Ali, the main thing is that because orphan name, uh, especially it it, it it attracts everyone. Because I mean, uh, many of the people they ask me like, oh, yes, I mean, why you have uh, left the professional cricket? I do uh, love to play cricket right now, but I've just been uh, such busy in this work. I mean, I don't see anyone else because we even uh, tend to uh, just. Uh, spend our eid with the orphans, I mean, because in the orphanages, because we have got so many orphans, I mean, sitting back, because, see, uh, right now, if uh, uh, even there are orphans who don't have anything to eat at home, and we are just spending eid with them, it's really, f I mean, it, have it's you a spent? Have you spent uh, eid with, the, with orphans? I've spent, I mean, many of my eids with the orphans, especially in Wazirabad or in, in Sindh. Tell us, we tell us about that. See, I mean, uh, because uh, most of the orphans back in the Wazirabad complex, they don't have even, uh, they, they are, they're both, they are orphans from both. I mean, they don't have mom and father, even they don't have a family. I remember a, a child, I mean, uh, she's still studying over there. She's six years of age, and uh, she once told me that, sir, she was crying. I said, what happened? And she said, sir, uh, we were five sisters and brothers. I don't know uh, where they are. I said, what happened? I mean, they said, like, my relatives, they have sent... Uh, to someone else. I mean, some are gone to uh, Wazirabad and some are gone to Gujarat. I don't know where they are. Mm -hmm. So that was such a situation. I mean, it's really hard to work over there. You need to just, uh, I, I mean, I bet, I mean, if Ali, you just come with me, you seriously will love to spend time with orphans because that's something where uh, you say on, Shayad mere guna maaf ho rahe ke, I'm spending time with orphans. I mean, it's really fun to uh, stay with them. Absolutely, yes. No, uh, and is there a way people can uh, contribute? It is, I mean, see, we have got individual donors, I mean, because uh, back in, we have got the fundraising offices back in UK, then we got in Canada, now it's being established in US to South Africa. Most of them, the, uh, most of them, they contribute through uh, single donations, I mean, it's 30 pounds per month for an orphan because you get free of education, free cost of uh, living in Wazirabad complex, and especially when he's a success. I mean, because see, uh, for me, I would say an orphan being a successful story is that he becomes a doctor because whatever I have been doing with him, whatever I've been teaching, and at last he becomes a doctor. De definitely, that's a success story for me. Do you organize any Eid-related activities? For that? We do definitely because I mean, uh, on not on the Eid days, before the Eid days, because we have got Qurbani project. I mean, just going on all over Pakistan. It's how, all. How over, does that work? Uh, because like uh, in Pakistan right now, we have got more than 900 uh, Qurbanis being organized, uh, organized in Pakistan. The uh, because back in the communities like in UK, USA. They can't perform a qurbani over there. They send the money over here. We send it to the orphans or the poor. I mean, back in Pakistan where we have the projects and where there's the qurbani being organized. Uh, Nena, a little bit more about uh, what you do. Uh, you've obviously done wonderful work. You've organized uh, a number of events. Uh, where do you see this organization going in the next five years? Where do you want it to be? Inshallah, uh, I, we have no projects. We have no mega projects. Uh, we have planned to go to for Olympics, for international games, for uh, international media. I don't know where we can stand in the coming five years. Uh, we believe in work. We can go for hard work, work hard, hard work, hard work, hard work, and hard work. And the results going to be, I think, after five years. I'll tell you right. where, where, where we stand. Absolutely, no. Uh, you know, you've touched on a very important point: mm -hmm. hard work, something yeah. that. Yeah. Uh, you know, people take for granted, exactly. I mean, the importance of hard work, and that's something clearly uh, Saima believes in. Actually, uh, our people, uh, it's not a very serious, no? They, they don't go to serious for disabled sport. Disabled, oh no, please. 
इसको घर में रहने मैनेजर and they were very very high headed and they were not in time on in, in the court they were not in time they were not very well disciplined and uh, and what else i mean i haven't got any good story to let you know about it but yes i've got bad experience that uh, there's no coordination they're not very proud of what they playing up they're not responsible uh, they are here for all, for pakistan and I saw most of them. They're absent. They're not into rooms. Right. And, well, know. to be honest, Sam, well, I mean, Pakistan's first and only sport, really, if you think about it, is cricket. You know, they're not. We're not paying attention to other sports. So, uh, in your opinion, what more can be done to further promote uh, your sport, like badminton, or your, or a sport that you're passionate about, like basketball? I'm sorry. First of all, I fully disagree that the this cricket is the only. uh it was it was like never like this hockey was the one and still in the pages which as you know and every one of us know what's happening around it's lot worse as word. in it's not i mean cricket gets more attention than other attention, sports that's yes, what i'm saying yes attention and and the time and the, everything is in the pocket of cricket which is which is really unjustified which is not balanced it has to be very balanced for the sports of pakistan it should equally Uh, every one of us, even the Taliban, even the uh, community, even the Pakistani, we should work on a balance, even balance for every sports from um, cricket to, to squash to to hockey to right. even you know this need to be balanced. This need to be disciplined. Wherever you go, you will find out the character. You will find out the page full of the cricket. You will find the charming charm, related charm with the characters. That's not fair. Yes. Now I would just say, Ansi, I mean, it's just not about cricket because it is that with Pakistan, especially if you just watch out the neighboring country. I mean, India. What I feel is that, Ali, see, I mean, they have organized such sports for different kind of people. I mean, you got hockey league going over there, you got football yeah. league going over there, you got badminton league going on over there, you got tennis league going on because they are just improvising sports over there. You need to do the same thing over here in mm-hmm. Pakistan. They, Unfortunately, the way they market the kabaddi league. The, see, the the kabaddi league. Hey, I am so impressed of the lady this it time. Is, and oh Ali, uh, it was seriously. I mean, I would mm-hmm. say it was a sad moment for us when uh, our boxer Mohammad Wasim, uh, uh, he yeah. just won that lightweight world championship, and there was no. for boxing association to support him up and if you just watch out uh, and alhamdulillah muslim hands is going to be supporting him for the next fight he, uh, we are going, going to sponsor him and if you just watch out the other ones ufc fighter the ulumi kareem he had no one to sponsor him because you don't have that trend over here you just got cricket going on you need to improvise because if you just watch out other countries they have got so much in sports i mean they have got one player goes on they have got several ready for the for that sports unfortunately we have so much so much we have been in cricket that we uh, our national uh, uh, team hockey team unfortunately the way they have been they have not selected for the olympics they got they got a wild card entry they didn't go for that no it's i mean so it's it severe is, it's severe neglect of us with that's what's going well, on because i think i guess i would uh, like to add that we should prepare uh, the nursery we don't have the young children with us uh, we don't have the role models with us I mean, in the past, we, if you meet, I'm sorry, to characters of past, they're fatty. They're like they don't look like players. And if you meet a hockey player, they don't look like. I mean, you need to produce the role models who has to be look at least look like a player. And then there's no nursery. There's 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 not much about children are uh, needed to train as. as planned the schools and the colleges and the universities as well right well we have to uh, wrap up very soon but before i do i'm going to ask my guests uh, how they plan on uh, celebrating uh, eid this time nena what are your definitely plans? Um, i'll go to traditional dress i love to dress up in a very traditional way and uh, after that guest <laughs> guest <laughs> and, and guest and qurbani Obviously, Qurbani is a uh, special uh, eight days of Qurbani, 
we can go for cooking, 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 and then cooking. Samar, your plans? <laughs> well, I go to village as and then I spend a whole day while the the animals are being slaughtered. Then the portions and and it has to go to as my mother already had left a, a list for us. This has to go to neighbors. This has to go to the poorers. This has to go to family and nothing for you. So in first day, I'll spend the day for all this, and in the evening, I'll get tired and go to sleep. <laughs> That's it. Good. But what we expect you in the kitchen? <laughs> I, I, I am not. I'm sorry. I don't do anything in kitchen. What about to what about egg and toast? I'm sure. <laughs> I do. Yes, I do egg. Uh, no, you probably watch what you eat because, like, being being a sports yes, person, I do you probably have to be very careful. I, I do eat protein a lot. I drink a lot of water and green tea. I take apples and fruit. I'm not into this clay cooking and all that. I'm sorry. I'm not into kadai so I don't know. So you I'm don't really like desi food. I, well, for, for some break, I do, but. And I don't fancy it at all. You're, so what? So being in Newcastle for all the, all those years was fine. You never had uh, cravings. Well, yes, uh, in, yes, I did sometime, and I do as a human today as well. But I am a very disciplined person. Mm -hmm. yeah, but before I move on, just this always intrigues me in athletes' diet. <laughs> what when uh, when you when you were playing? Yeah. Uh, what was your diet like? Most of protein, a lot of rest. And a uh, lot of hard work. What about exercise? How did you uh, exercise, tell us about your exercise routine? Well, it's not only badminton. I do, uh, for playing good badminton, I do weight training. I do go for swimming. I do go for football. And I do go, go for horse riding just to keep myself fit for badminton. No, but what's uh, intriguing, what's interesting about badminton is, uh, Saima, is that, you know, you see a lot. It's easy to play just like that. You know, I am I'm, sorry, it is not easy to play. Let, Come it, down to us and see how... If you actually <laughs> let me finish my sentence. Okay. Yeah, all right. It's easy to play in the sense that, you know, you can you can manage because the shuttlecock comes slowly. But to play on a profession, to play professionally, that's a completely different kettle of fish. It is. So tell us about that. Tell us it the kind is. of practice. It is, it is certainly, Ali, because when you... Uh, uh, watch and see the it comes like a bullet. Yeah, this, absolutely. Then. This this shuttle come for, come as a bullet, and you have to, it is a defense and a attacks game. It is it is a battle within that yard, and uh, while you practice, you have to you know it is not only you, you play with the different players. It is just you play really hard and scientifically you have to gauge the time how fast it has to be and how improved you have to what's your strength your drop shot or smashing <laughs> or long very good. come down and see us <laughs> <laughs> <I'm very good. laughs> right uh Aves, your plans uh, first of all, it's going to be uh, Qurbani, I mean, because uh, we, uh, first day especially, we do, do the Qurbani and just distribute the uh, the, I mean, the meat in, uh, in the needies. Second day, definitely with the relatives, and the third day, again, with relatives and friends. Because after such a long period of time, I mean, I'm, I'm celebrating my Eid in Pakistan, so uh, it's going to be fun, definitely. Absolutely. I'm sure, and I'm sure your missus has cooked up a storm for you. <laughs> Unfortunately, you know, the incident, I mean, she yeah. had an accident, me, and she, Oops. right now, she's on a bed rest, I and mean, so definitely I'm going to be missing her. It's just my mom or my uh, other auntie's going to so be So your there. mom will cook, uh, cook up a storm <laughs> for yeah. you, and inshallah, no, your wife, I'm sure. Uh, she'll be okay soon. We wish her all the best. Yeah. Uh, I'd like to thank the three of you for coming on. It was a pleasure speaking to you. Eid Mubarak. God bless you. You're all doing wonderful work. Thank you. Eid Mubarak. I hope we get to speak again soon. Eid Mubarak. Eid Mubarak. Thank you. Thank you. That's all we have time for. Keep watching Sports Extra on PTV World. See you next time. Bye-bye.